woman like that could teach you a lot about yourself. Hi guys, so uh, thanks for jumping in back on the channel again and having a look at this. This is uh, my contribution to International Women's Day this year in 2022. Um, so I was quite um, pleased that it was International Women's Day because I think it's quite a nice video to do. So I'm going to celebrate female authors with 10 books that I think are wonderful that come from uh, female science fiction authors. So 10 science fiction books that come from um, the place of celebrating women in literature International Women's Day. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, The Big Daddy. So this is cited quite often as the first ever science fiction book. It is Frankenstein, Mary Shelley. She wrote this when she was incredibly young. She was just a teenager when she wrote this. It's quite phenomenal that she did this. And uh, the book is, is just such an incredible piece of work. It's still studied um, in schools and colleges, quite rightly. Um, it's got loads and loads of layers to it. It's really, really philosophical. It's not the kind of sort of base monster thing that you see in the movies. Uh, Hollywood has definitely dumbed it down so that it's quite simplified. But if you get a chance to read this, please do. It's not very long and it's very, very powerful, very deep, very thoughtful, very considered. It's uh, it's all about existence and, and it's about... Cause, because uh, part of the motivation for Mary Shelley writing it was something that happened to her that made her think about life and mortality and the creation of life and that's what this is all sort of playing along with so uh, it's a phenomenal book uh, so I know people are familiar with the story but if they're only familiar with the story because of the films then they're not really familiar with the book so so Mary Shelley's Frankenstein what I'm starting with because I should be starting with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein okay so the next person I'm going to talk about is another giant of science fiction much more modern but still relatively old in today's standards, Ursula K. Le Guin. Ursula K. Le Guin. Uh, I, everything I've read by her, I think, is fantastic. And um, I think I've read five of her books now, so I've got a bunch of others to read. But I want to talk about The Dispossessed. I could have easily chosen Left Hand of Darkness, which is a phenomenal book that I will be talking about again at some point. Uh, I have done a video on Ursula Le Guin, to be fair. But this one is an interesting one to pick out for this video because I really love the way that she discusses and explores two very different societies and two very different political ideologies in this book. One's a kind of a, um, an idealist capitalist state and the other one is like an anarcho-communist um, socialist-ish state that um, is being, um, is ultimately a book is comparing the two and someone that's being uh, acting as an envoy uh, from one to, from the, um, anarchic slash socialist um, planet to the capitalist one is learning the differences and as the reader you explore the consequences of those differences with Ursula Le Guin. It's an amazing book and it's it's really uh, deep and important and worth reading and it, it properly discusses the social implications of these ideologies. So Dispossessed is awesome and Ursula Le Guin is awesome. Um, this is an interesting one that uh, I wanted to include in this 10 books, and that's A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. So if you are familiar with her name, you might be familiar with her name because of the Wayfarers series, and this is the second book in the series, and I think it's the best one. Um, lots of people don't think this is the best one. I've seen people say it's a dip in the quality of the series, which is odd to me, because I was absolutely compelled through the whole thing. I couldn't put it down. I was so... Uh, driven to finish it as soon as possible because I was enjoying it so much and basically it's two stories that run concurrently and there's lots of sort of flashbacks within that and basically there there's two stories are uh, one is from Sidra who used to be an AI part of a ship and uh, at the end of the first book oh spoilers at the end of the first book um, the AI system on a ship is given human form and basically this this book is exploring Sidra trying to get used to the um, the idea of being humanoid and what that really means and um, for, for, for Sidra. That's a name that she gives herself as well. Um, so before that, um, the name of the AI is Lovelace, I think. Um, so um, that is exploring that whole identity and getting used to being able to do things and not do things because of um, having this humanoid form. 
And running alongside that is a really a, a equally awesome story of uh, Jane 23, who um, is then at this point in the story called Pepper and goes back to her childhood and the fact that she was like in this sort of slave situation and kind of gets rescued by a an, another AI called Owl that rescues her because of an explosion in the factory that she was kind of forced to uh, work in as she was growing up as a child. And again, that's more explanation, explorations of identity, getting used to the freedom, getting used to a new situation. And it's just so brilliantly done. And they basically help each other to um, get used to these this new situation, this new life. It's such a great book. And uh, I really loved it. And I, don't, I honestly don't think the others are as good. I haven't read the fourth one yet, to be fair. So I'm looking forward to reading that. But in the meantime... Uh, this is such a great book. It sounds like it's own as well. Um, so, Becky Chambers, Closing Common Orbit. Martha Wells, All Systems Red. So, this is another um, AI exploration. This is part of the Murderbot Diaries. So, I have mentioned this briefly when I talked about the um, short books uh, that I recommend. And these are very short books. And you may be put off by thinking you've got to spend a lot of money on a short book, but try and get them cheaper if you can, or just go for it because they are really good. This is a really good book. It's quite funny. It's quite different because it's an AI trying to put up with, um, kind of the disdain that she has for, uh, the humans she's got to work for. And she's got this love of soap operas that she likes watching, but she's also kind of trying to improve the situation she's and, and the people she works for by, bettering her own programming um it's just a really fun read really and uh it's it's definitely worth reading so very popular series all systems read the murderbot diaries so check that out martha wells okay octavia butler so so octavia butler is a really popular author you may have heard her um books being championed before kindred is probably the most famous one but this is a really good book it's a book that kind of stayed with me after i read it so when i first read it I didn't quite realise how much I appreciated the book. Um, it's really intense. It's kind of quite brutal in places. It's set in a dystopian society, um, and it's like a family that is trying to live in this uh, situ in this society that's really violent. It's very uh, all there. The society's broken down massively, and their their means of of surviving is very uh, desperate. The relationships are fraught. It's, I don't really want to spoil too much because it's better if you discover it in the book, but it's a very intense read and it's not really necessarily about the government creating this dystopian society because it is about ordinary people being very selfish, being desperate, and how that kind of society breaks down from the bottom as much as, as a whole and from the top. So, yeah, it's a really interesting exploration of all that. And uh, she's definitely worth reading. So if you've read Kindred, read Parable of the Sower. And if not, pick up Parable, Parable of the Sower because it's a great book. Um, this is uh, an interesting one. This is another AI exploration, Autonomous uh, by Annalie Newitz. Um, this was one of my relatively newer reads. And uh, it's really interesting read. It's about um, a computer hacker that finds out there's some sort of... Um, she, she kind of uncovers a kind of a conspiracy with a pharmaceutical company and in her exploration of this, uh, she ends up being on the run and there's a couple of people after her and it goes between the two stories of them being after her and her trying to figure out um, how to stop this pharmaceutical company from um, doing this bad stuff they're doing. There's, there's all sorts of identity explorations in this book, to be fair. It's not just about the AI. It's, uh, there's all sorts going on. It's really worth reading. It's, a, it's an interesting sort of political book. It's an interesting social commentary book. It's, a, it's got a really fast pace. It's a lot of fun to read. There's another one that I sort of rattled through because I couldn't wait to finish it because it's so good, not because I was fed up with it, because I was really enjoying it. So Autonomous by Annalie Newitz is a really good book. And uh, this, is, uh, this is actually number eight in the uh, Chronicles of St. Mary series. I wanted to mention Jodie Taylor because it seems a bit weird not to mention her when I've read seven of her other books and really enjoyed them and I bought this one because I wanted to continue the series and I've bought the other, the first book of the Time Police series as well because I want to keep reading her stuff. I, I find her very funny, very fun to read 
and uh, it's all about time travel. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. And uh, and the rest is history. I'm not sure what happens with this one yet because I haven't read it. But in the other seven books, it's basically Max, who is the main character in all of these. Uh, Max, short for Maxine. She uh, joins up with this university that, that basically um, consolidates our knowledge of history by going back in time, seeing the thing actually played out, and clearly things go wrong. Um, so a lot of this, some of it's because they fumble about and do silly things. Some of it is because there's there's like a villain in the series that messes things up for them, and some of it's because things happen that they didn't expect. And there's loads and loads of different events in history they travel to because in the seven books I've read, they must have travelled to about twenty different locations and events in history. So if you're interested in history, you might enjoy that. Um, she definitely does the research because there's there's real detail in uh, what they find when they get there. But it's a very, very fun, light-hearted read, and it's, it's very cool. So uh, this is number eight, which I'm going to be getting on to soon. And the rest is history. Jodie Taylor, Chronicles of St. Mary's. And two more to go. This is a book that I was going to talk about. I still might talk about when I, I want to do a video soon on biological science fiction. So clearly, science fiction is all about clearly it's going to be biolo biology, chemistry, and physics. And I quite like some of the books I've read that really focus on the biological aspect. And this is a really good example of that because this is about uh, a, a human colony that they want to form on this planet they think is absolutely barren of life. And there's actually a dominant life on the planet already, which is plant life. And so that plant life, sentient plant life, deals with these visitors, these humanoid visitors. It's a really good book. Uh, Semiosis. I've got the other book to read at some point. Um, because it's a duology, but this first book is definitely worth reading. So Semiosis, Sue Burke. And then, just to finish off, again, I'm very close to doing a video about this author in general, but Claire North. So uh, my favourite Claire North book is the one just behind, Touch. I think it's so brilliant. Uh, but I won't talk about that too much yet. I'll talk about the most popular book by her. So The 14 Lives of Harry August. If you've read this, then you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't read this, read it as soon as possible it's so good and uh i won't tell you too much i'll do that in the claire north video but i wanted to finish with her because i she's one of my favorite authors i think she's fantastic and this book rightly so um is very very popular if you see any of her books on the shelves it's usually this one and uh yeah each time harry august uh dies he kind of gets reincarnated if you like as a young harry august again he gets reborn as harry august and, and has um as the top says, 15 lives by the end of the book. So, yeah, it's, it's an amazing story with lots of different intrigue and lots of layers to it. And again, I, I couldn't wait to read the next bits. It's, it's so well written. Her, she writes in a very fast-paced way, so um, some people so it's been a lot of time world-building. There's enough world-building for the story to make sense in this, but she does write with a fast pace. So, I mean, like in Touch, as soon as, I mean, on the first pages of Touch, Touch there's a, um, a chase going on. And it's quite hectic straight away. And this one builds up nicely as well. So 15 Lives of Harry August is my last contribution to 10 books written by... 10 science fiction books written by women that you should read. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, check out those books if you haven't yet. If you've got any other suggestions, please comment below. Subscribe and like the video. Thanks a lot, everyone. Bye. Well, that was a bit of a false ending because I missed one out. So that was nine books because I didn't, I, this was on my bed waiting to be mentioned. So Station Eleven, Emily St. John Mandel, probably the best apocalyptic book I've read so far. I've got a few others to read, but I think this is my favourite. I thought it was really interestingly done. It's about uh, an act, a theatre troupe that are surviving, trying to keep the arts alive in the apocalypse. Uh, you may have heard of it. There's a series that's just started on Amazon, I want to say. I'm not sure. Um, which might be worth checking out. But regardless of that, read the book. It's brilliant. Um, again, it, lots of stories con running concurrently through the book. Lots of um, backstory stuff. So there's some uh, flashback material in there sort of from before the apocalypse happened. Or I say the apocalypse, it's like a pandemic kind of situation. So hopefully that's not too uh, triggering. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just fantastically built up. It's really good. There's some really dramatic, brutal bits in it. It's not quite as brutal as something like Blindless, which I've spoken about before, but it's um, still very dramatic, and, and uh, the way that people react in this situation, some of it is really selfish and nasty, and 
makes for good drama. So Station Eleven, Emily St. John Mandel. Have a look. Um, great book. That's the end. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye. <laughs>